Well, the, the question of, of what this entire process means to your group is an excellent question. And in my opinion, uh, what, it, what it does is primarily bring a level of gravitas to your uh, entire organization and to what you planned with the musicians and with your donors and your board, et cetera, that, that, that this is now uh, not an amateur ad hoc group which is put together when people's schedules allow, but that it is serious in its purpose serious in its mission and serious in its musical gravitas. And that's, that's the impression that I'm getting from the way you're handling the various components of this, including uh, graciously having me come and participate in your concert. Uh, further, I think that, that, that having me involved with the composers, the young composers as well as the young conductors is a, is a superb idea in, in the sense that it, that it approaches the challenge from both sides. Most of the time you find that these types of events either feature the composers only, some type of competition, and then the composers get their works played, or they're oriented towards the conductors who, who get master classes in, in conducting and rehearsing and score study of new music, but that the composers are a second or third afterthought. But you've, you've in effect, combined both elements with, which are, are, of course, completely related, that the composers need to have the experience of seeing what works and what doesn't work in their writing, and the conductors need the hands-on opportunity to work with professional, young professional musicians and see what works and doesn't work for them. So you've, you've in effect captured uh, the, the challenges in both areas simultaneously, which is unique in my experience. I, I don't know anywhere else in Europe or in, in uh, the United States where where both things concurrently have been addressed. I know a lot of places that, of course, where the composers are featured in, in some kind of quasi-competition, and I know a lot of places where conductors are trained, but I don't know any place in which both uh, areas are simultaneously emphasized. So I think it's very, very impressive. The whole, the whole approach philosophically, conceptually, uh, is is very powerful and 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 puts you in a unique position in terms of moving forward with your group uh, with this type of vision and this type of of uh, activity. So I, I think I think that that as I said at the beginning, I think what this does for your group is it is it imputes a certain seriousness and a certain imagination and a certain creativity to the way you're thinking about your ensemble, which is unique. It's very powerful. In fact, uh, one of the uh, composer men. I think with respect to, to what the composers should optimally be getting out of the experience, you've structured it perfectly. I don't, I don't see anything that's missing, and I don't see anything that should be added. Uh, I think the argument could be made that the musicians who are playing, or the, excuse me, the, the composers who are playing are at a slight disadvantage because, because they have to focus primarily on their music and they're, they're less able to see the global perspective from the bassoon chair. So that, that ideally you might want to consider having composers not play, but I don't see it as a serious problem because, because they're smart enough to, to uh, observe what's going on when they're not playing and when they're playing they're they're able to to extrapolate what might be being said to them specifically to other instruments in the larger ensemble so I don't I don't think it's a problem I think that what you've done is is superb having scores for all the composers to follow along 
and uh, we will see today in the debriefing session with the conductors um, how uh, how they're doing, how they're how responsive they are, how many questions they have, and the composers I think are being treated very well and handled perfectly by you. The thing that I was that I was impressed with with regard to the to the six compositions that we did that we're doing today uh, is is that they were all unique in their point of view and they were all serious in terms of their individuality and their creativity. There was, there was no indication of pandering, there was no indication of wholesale um, um, co-opting of, of existing styles and just basically doing some minimalistic piece of digga 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 combining you know Philip Glass with Rite of Spring I mean which is so common these days there wasn't a sense that a lot of it was composed or 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 checked with MIDI synthesizer which I also find to be a scourge these days what I what I felt was that the the six pieces all had their own integrity and they're all then their own point of view and 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 that's unusual these days because so much of the, the the composition done by your generation is in my observation uh, highly derivative doesn't have an original idea nor does it have any significant gestation or development and that was not the case in these six pieces that you chose so that that bodes very well for your criteria in choosing the compositions and also these individuals uh, careers.